My story takes place in a small Canadian city, not too far from Vancouver, called Kelowna. Well, the thing is, when I visit Vancouver, I feel like a minority. But living here in Kelowna, I really feel like a minority. As I grew up, I never had a sense of having one true culture. My mom, she's Japanese. My dad, well, he's a Euro mutt. He's part British, Scottish, Russian, and German. Well, when they threw it all together, they got me. I guess that's why I love to put soy sauce on my pierogies or sauerkraut on my rice. My Japanese Canadian grandparents had five daughters who all, much to my grandpa's dismay, married white guys. Now, growing up, I always felt like my sisters, cousins, and I were our own special race, a half Japanese army. We were the banana bunch, yellow on the outside and white on the inside. It wasn't until recently I discovered a word, hapa. At first, I thought it was short for half Japanese. Well, in Japanese, hapa actually means leaf. But hapa is also a Hawaiian term for Asians of mixed race, like my cousins and I. So I finally had a word to describe my ethnicity. No longer would I have to tell people I'm a half-breed. Growing up in Kelowna, I always felt out of place, even though I didn't look all that different from the other kids. But as soon as they found out I was half Japanese, I became a full minority. Just Japanese, pass it on. They'd say, You're short because you're Asian. Or, Do you know Kung Fu? No. Oh, but if I knew Kung Fu. Yeah. Come on, say something in Japanese. I'd use the only Japanese word I knew. Baka. Now my grandpa taught me that. Unfortunately, as I got older, things didn't get any better. In high school, my redneck friends had many nicknames for me. Hey, little nipper. Yo, what up, nip foo? But the best nickname of all was... Super Nip! Hey, Super Nip, you're gonna teach us some karate? Why don't you take our picture? Do you think he does deliveries? <laughs> to this very day, I still have friends who call me Super Nip! Hey, before you go, check this out. Come on, honey. Say it. Bye bye, Super Nip. <laughs> I never found myself attracted to Japanese girls. <laughs> and I never really knew why until I tried dating one. Nancy was a cute Japanese girl, born in Canada, and didn't have an accent. After watching a movie one night, we shared our first kiss. Now, I didn't want to get too worked up, so I started to let my mind wander. I began thinking of weird things, like moldy pickles, dead puppies, gas station sandwiches. 
Then I opened my eyes for a brief second, and I thought of, what the heck, my mom? Ah! What's wrong? I, I can't do this. Now, it wasn't that Nancy looked like my mom, but it was because she was Japanese like my mom. All the years of being treated like a minority had affected how I viewed full Japanese Canadians. And it was at that moment when I realized I was ashamed to be part Japanese. Throughout my life, people always ask me, what are you anyways? Anytime I mention, I'm half Japanese, I get reactions like, oh, you're half Japanese. You know what they say about Japanese guys. <laughs> Sometimes I wonder why I just don't say I'm half white. But no matter what, everybody just loves to play the ethnic guessing game with me. Are you Latino? No. You're Portuguese, right? No. What about an Indian? No! East Indian? No! You know what? I'm Hawaiian. Oh yeah, you're Hawaiian. That's so cool. So, what are you doing Saturday night? I guess the only good thing about how I look is I can be Filipino when I visit the Philippines. Or Brazilian when I travel to Brazil. Or Mexican when I vacation in Mexico. Or... One night when I was out, I noticed a really cute, exotic girl. I started dancing with her, but the only thing I could think of saying was... So, what are you? My ethnicity? Yeah! I'm half Japanese, and you? Me? Well, I'm, I'm half white! And it was love at first sight. Her name was Jenny, and she looked Asian. So my friends just had to remind me. Thought you can't date Japanese girls, Jeff. I guess Jenny just reminded me more of me. The only difference was she took pride in being a hapa. She'd always grab a yellow and a white straw when we got slushies. Jenny grew up in Kelowna, never having experienced any sort of racism. I realized it was because she was proud to be half Japanese. And it was because I was ashamed to be different that I allowed people to pick on me. This one time, my friend actually said to us, Hey, if you have kids, they'll be full Japanese. In which Jenny replied, Okay, wait, where do you think the white halves go, baka? Her love for being a hapa began to grow on me. And for Valentine's Day, I bought her half yellow and half white roses. Now when people ask, what are you anyways? I proudly tell them, I'm Hapa. It took falling in love with Jenny for me to finally appreciate just how lucky I am to be a Hapa living in Canada. I now have a passion to travel to the countries of my origin and share stories with others of mixed race that I meet along the way. And so, my story ends. Happily ever after.